All right. Good afternoon, folks. This is Steve with Real Progressives. Today is a fun one. You know, we're trying to get the clocks lining up. You know, you're sitting there trying to figure out what noon in the in the UK looks like and so forth. And uh, I have a friend from the UK, from the MMT podcast, comedian and economic activist, uh, Christian Riley. Christian has been a friend of Real Progressives for some time, and he's even helping us produce the uh, macro and cheese podcast that we'll be getting out here in short order. But without further ado, what I want to do is I want to bring on my guest. Welcome, sir. How are you today? I'm good. Thanks, Steve. It's an absolute privilege to talk to you. And thank you in person for all the work that you've done and all that you've taught me uh, in MMT as well. So thanks for that. Well, you, you're an amazing guy. And that's why we have you on here. You one of the things that I want our, our audience to know is that, first and foremost, the struggle that we all think we're fighting here at Real Progressives is not a U.S.-based only uh, fight. I mean, this is a global war against neoliberalism, and you guys are leading the charge out there in the U.K. along with Gims and other folks. Yeah, we'll give it a go. Yeah, so so why don't you do us a favor? Talk a little bit about what you're doing with the MMT podcast talk a little bit about how you got involved in MMT, and then we'll take it from there. Okay, well, um, my uh, after the 2008 uh, crisis, I was looking around for answers about what's happened because we were told we'd spent too much money and uh, there was no money to pay for anything. But at the same time, they made loads of money to bail out the banks. And this is me in 2008. I'm like, right, so there's loads of money, but there's not any money at all. It was like Schrodinger's money. <laughs> and, um, and so I started reading up on what money was. And I uh, eventually came across the uh, uh, Naked Capitalism blog and went into that, went, read a lot of Michael Hudson. And then one day I came across Warren Mosler. And that I just thought, wow, this this guy really knows how to put it across. And uh, and I just devoured everything I could on MMT. And, um, you know, that event, you know, eventually. So you can see this is like a, a period of years. You know, I came across your stuff and you, you're talking to Ellis and, you know, all those really educational chats and stuff. And then but then just seeing what the what the. Um, uh, you know the sort of emotion that you put into it i think is really important to me as well it's really inspiring and so uh i i very much like to consume podcasts myself so i thought first of all right i don't know a few years ago i thought mmt is so uh, uh once the penny drops it's so illuminating that like all i need to do really is sit back and wait i'll just get on with, i just mind my, my I, you know what i do in my day job is i'm a comedian and when i when i put shows together for the edinburgh festival i try and make songs that make a political point and i mix it in with lots of very very daft stuff and that's to me that's my sort of like i'm trying to you know just raise consciousness a millimeter on certain issues uh through this thing uh, that i do as a, as a job i just i happen to find myself being a comedian when all of this stuff became important to me so um i thought why well, I, I just need to this is so obvious and then around about 2014 david graber wrote up uh, a paper that uh, had been put out by the bank of england that was uh, the title of the article was something like uh, money is an IOU and the banks are rolling in it and it was sort of on page 90 of the Guardian <laughs> but I just thought now it's in mainstream news <laughs> and um, so it's only a matter of time surely you know, I don't have to do anything I don't have to push on this at all it's going to happen naturally and, and then but then it just I don't know after Trump was elected and things started moving more to the right i mean well moving more racing to the right in a kind of you know just this death wish that seems to have happened globally to, to society and to like decency i just thought this is not gonna anyway it, it, I, I had a few projects to get out of the way and then i thought right I'm, I'm gonna i don't know how to approach this but you know i was very inspired by uh uh reading what uh patricia was writing on twitter and uh, you, you know, reading uh, what she was, she was putting out on the websites, and uh, and I thought I got in touch with her um, to interview her for a podcast that I thought it's just going to be me. You know, I'm just going to interview a whole bunch of people, and uh, and then after the first one, um, in between sort of 
that the the original the initial chat and then sitting down to edit it i thought hey we could do that regularly if she was up for it so um so i i, I messaged her and said why, why don't we do this regularly and that's how the mmt podcast started that's amazing so uh, first of all i want to thank you for acknowledging the passion part of this you know offline i almost wish that we could have done our pre-talk on <laughs> camera um in retrospect because some of the things i think are really important right we have so we have way. various stations in this war you know and there's so many opportunities to serve in getting the message out there you know and from real progressive standpoint you know we 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 didn't say that we're real mmt we're real progressives. And so our job has been to translate MMT to a progressive world so that they can know how to use this to activate a progressive agenda. Um, you know, naturally, MMT is nonpartisan, so you can morph and move and you know, moving around all sorts of different circles. But the if you think about what a progressive is, you know, a progressive isn't typically the person sitting there in a smoking jacket with a long curling pipe and a snuff of a uh, scotch or anything like that. And, you know, an old smoky room with, you know, they're, they're oh, how have you been seeing what goes on in my house? <laughs> <laughs> but, surveillance state. <laughs> the, the progressives in the U S tend to be, you know, at, at rallies with their fist in the air, sure. yelling about things that are important, the environment, health care, yeah student debt, you know, and you think about that and you say, what is always missing with progressives? They got the right stuff. The Green Party's fighting for a lot of the right things, a lot of the right things, but they keep failing the economics. Well, um, I think the reason that I went down the, the route of calling the podcast the MMT podcast is I don't care who picks it up and runs with it. If it happens to be a right winger or something like that, that's fine. Eventually for it to... Uh, permeate and be part of our culture like a lot of mmts are fond of saying look we uh we uh, created a school system and it, it's federally funded and locally administered um it, it's uh you know we're beyond the debate about whether that's good or bad or whether we can afford it and not afford it and we need to be like that with say medicare for all or over here in the uh, in the uk about the nhs and unfortunately, in the UK, um, popular opinion is very aligned with um, uh, the NHS. You know, everybody loves the NHS. If you took a poll, uh, you, you'd get you'd like 80 percent of the population are, are, you know, really in favor of the NHS. And so loads of those are going to be conservatives. So um, uh, we tend to get our uh uh, our aspirations as progressives curtailed by, and it's really been hammered home uh, since 2008, by this idea that there's not enough money. We could run out of money. And so that's why I went down uh, the route of uh, trying to understand what money is, and then that led me to MMT. So it it, it really is our answer, our answer our answering machine to all of that. <laughs> to Can we afford it? And and so, uh, I, I you know I I identify as as left of center. I, I'd call myself actually. Uh, I like anarchism. You know, I think you know a a, a you know force is not self justifying all that stuff. You know, and so. Um, but I'm not like, oh, let's dismantle the whole state. I mean, first we've got to, you know, uh, you know, make our modifications and prove that power is illegitimate before we go that far. So that, so that's my, that's that's where I'm coming from. That's that's sure. my political conscience. Uh, but I totally, I've got, I've got conservative friends. I like them, and I always try and see things from the perspective of. You know, they they think competition's healthy. They think that you know they think they and and as a corollary, corollary of that, they're going to be thinking, yeah. So unemployment means hey, some people just have to lose the competition, and they're just going to have to deal with it. And you know that's and you know MNT goes, look, no, you you can have it your way. <laughs> you can have a really competitive private sector, but you know we don't have to. You know there doesn't have to be a zero bid. For right. unemployed labor, you know, and and you 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 can understand this, you know, it's not you don't have to become 
a, a Marxist to understand this. And, you know, that's what MMT gives us anyway. So, yes, it gives that spectrum. And, yeah, and yeah. you know, I, I watched yesterday as the um, the election results rolled in and neoliberal after neoliberal after neoliberal got elected. Yes, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez got through, but then again, she was basically uncontested. That was we knew she was going to win. Sure. But the rest of them, the other people like Tim Canova, Rodolfo Cortez, I mean, Guy Mamoun, I mean, the poor guy. I think he got 368 votes or something like that. And the libertarian that had left and quit the race a month prior got 1700. And, and it's like yeah. progressives in general got shellacked. Um, you know, you got uh, Tim Canova barely got 5% of the vote. And this is a guy who I, I feel has presidential qualities. And what, he, was that in Florida? Was it? That was in Florida. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Andrew, I, I think somebody commented on on real progressives but it was like well come on it's florida so who knows what actually happened right <laughs> well but here's the yeah. thing and this is what i think is dangerous and this is why uh, this conversation for me is so powerful today you know i i think that we realized at least i realized um that we want to believe that we're closer to critical mass than we are yeah but Good the point. reality is we have a hearty group of people that really, really dig this, that get it, that that are motivated by it. And I remember this feeling back in the 1980s, and it was called Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> <laughs> I was rolling a 20-sided die and taking on a plus 10 paladin of whatever. And, and the reality is, is that we all took it very seriously. Uh, you know, our slumber parties were met with the best of the <laughs> and we, but, but what I'm saying is, is that it, we were, we were still relegated to nerd status. It wasn't mainstream yet. And yeah. Yeah. We well, are. Maybe, maybe we could, this is why we've got to define where we're going. Yes. Like where we want to go. Right. And, yes. and so that's why I wrote that um, uh, manifesto and, put it up there on the real progressives group because i just thought this is probably the biggest number of people that that have got a good enough grasp of mmt to want to do something with it well let's beyond take mansplaining no let's take a step back and talk about that because we i wanted to yeah. that was where i was headed with this i wanted to right. introduce the manifesto right so it's still this hardy band of people and and they don't, you know, some of them are running over here saying, I want a UBI. Some of them are over here saying, well, you know, MMT is kind of good in theory. And you've got a bunch of there's there is a core group, a very small core, actually, that really, truly understands the vitality, the necessity of the federal job guarantee as part of the MMT framework. There's a very, very small core of people that understands that MMT is not just something that sounds good in the bar stool kind of yeah. terminology of theory but it's yeah. a real congruent set of observable facts yeah. that produce a lens by which we can evaluate all of our hopes and dreams exactly. and yeah. and so when you put together this manifesto and for those of you who don't know uh christian is a admin with us as well in the uh, modern monetary theory for real progressives group and he put together a, a, a phenomenal starting point for a uh, a manifesto of sorts for MMT activists. And, and basically, he got it run through uh, several layers of MMT uh, PhDs and, and through a bunch of us folks that really care about this. And we all went like this to it. OK. And, and so I asked Christian to come on the show to to basically walk us through. Um, the the manifesto so we could get folks to understand what it is that we're trying to the underlying foundational layer before we even talk about anything beyond that how do we know we can do these great things until we understand the the foundation and 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 that's what christians that's what he really did by putting this thing out there he really gave us a blueprint not only for how to conduct ourselves but what we're trying to leverage so christian i'm going to turn this over to you to kind of walk through the manifesto okay thanks mate well so my um i'll just give a little bit of personal background uh if you'll indulge me um i'm a big believer in a movement without uh an actual end goal a point where you'll declare right it's over we don't need to do anything now because we've got there. If you don't have that, you're not going to get there. 
So um, uh, my uh, uh, fiance recently, she um, started this campaign in on London Transport, which was to get uh, a, uh, she's um, disabled and she can't stand for very long. She walks with a stick and she um, uh, experienced that she couldn't get a seat. At, um, at peak times on tra on London Transport. So she started a movement to get, uh, and it was because people are engrossed, it's London, people are engrossed in their newspapers and their phones and stuff, and they, they don't look up, and they probably would offer a seat if they looked up. So she um, uh, started this campaign to get um, uh, the words, look up, does somebody need your seat, added to all the Mind the Gap announcements, which is something, if you've ever been to London, that's what they say on the tube when the doors open, you know, mind the gap between the train and the platform. And and so uh, what she didn't do was start a movement saying, hey, everybody, just be nice, because it's too broad. <laughs> you know, let's, this is a movement to make people nice. It's just a movement with a very specific end. And then it took her about, three or four weeks she got on she got quite a bit of mainstream broadcast time and some some famous people involved but she kind of became famous for for uh, for the cause uh through her activism because it was it was simple and it was something that everybody could get behind so uh i find that really inspiring so i decided uh you know that's what we need as mmt is is to know is is to um uh, is to maybe agree on where we're going so uh, I sat down and thought about that and I figured that what we want as MMT is, and again, everything I'm about to say is, is you correct me. I'm saying, I think this is where we all align. And, um, uh, you know, you correct me if you don't think you're aligned with this and then, you know, we'll find a way through together because it's not, it's not, it's not about me. It's just, it's about us. So I think what our, um, our, what we what we're trying to achieve globally as MMTers is uh, full employment and price stability, and full employment at a dignified wage. Just you know, to avoid anybody hijacking it and turning it into some uh, dystopian nightmare. Um, and uh, and I don't think anybody disputed that. So then we move on to like, how do we get there? And first, and the first. Sorry, Steve, were you going to say something? No, I just wanted to mention some. We we have some UBI folks that are in the uh, the live stream, and I would just I ask them to hold their, um, you know, it, it, it's not like we haven't heard the automation stuff before. Sure. And I would suggest that they might just take a minute, breathe, <laughs> and realize that we already know the answer to this question. And if you'll give us a chance, we'll fill you in on it too, so that you don't run around saying, oh my goodness, the robots are coming and automation's going to kill us all. There, there are things out there. There are ways around this. Uh, you know, Captain Kirk still is working. And I know the wagon wheel maker dreaded the steel radial. So <laughs> I, I, I'm pretty sure we'll be fine. So with that in mind, Chris, why, not, uh, why, why not actually... Uh, ban computers, smash all the computers, uh, yeah. bring back, think about it, it'll be jobs for the abacus makers. Uh, <laughs> you know, the, the, you know, why not? <laughs> I haven't yeah. laughed about like that since, oh my God, that's great. All right. There's, loads of, there's okay. loads of ways around this if this is how yes. you want to, how you want to create jobs. There's loads of ways around it. <laughs> um, but I don't think they're that productive. Anyway, um, so, so, you know, we recognize that, um, <laughs> Sorry. Skynet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, obviously, you know, Skynet always a danger. Uh, but you know, let's let's plow our own furrow, uh, you know. <laughs> until so yeah, um yeah, so if we want full employment, you know, even if there's there's loads of automation, we still want all the humans that are alive, they can still be uh fully employed, I think, you know, um, whatever that looks like. Um and, and price stability. So we recognize that we can't get there because, yeah, exactly as James is saying there, job guarantee is is the only way. And I know that sounds like me being dogmatic, but you know we've got plenty of, we can explain it in loads of different ways uh, in a minute. Um, but yeah, let me just plow on with this for a second if that's all right with you guys. Um, yeah, so we recognize that people reject that policy goal of full employment. And it's usually because they're afraid of inflation or you know they they misunderstand monetary sovereignty so 
uh, we this is why we need to explain MMT to everybody. I, I think some people go at it like, well, if I if if I can just get a bit of time with say the shadow chancellor of the Exchequer in in uh, in the UK and explain it to him, he'll it'll be like the the he'll be the super domino, and then MMT will be. And I don't I don't think that way. I think it's going to take a grassroots campaign. The, our politicians, we've seen it with Bernie, we've seen it with all with all our most progressive heroes that are in mainstream politics. Even we even suspect that they might know MMT, but they always stop short. They always stop, and and it's because it's not. We haven't created the culture where they can safely come out. I don't think. Now, some people may say they should just come out and be strong, and that, and fair enough. But I can't make them do that. What I can do is. I can talk to Stephen Grumbine. I can talk to Patricia. I can talk to everybody I meet. I can talk to, you know, so it's about creating a grassroots um, consciousness. It's like the teaching movements, um, uh, you know, back in the 60s or whatever. So, so you know, we could let's create a, a grassroots movement that so, so that the politician that tries to push these, the government's going to run out of money or, you know, if you spend one penny over a certain ratio it's we're going to end up in zimbabwe so those those people are just start looking like clowns so um so so uh so i i think the best way to spread mmt are, are this is again this is not a list of demands i just wrote seven points down and i was i was happy that they, it was seven points because you know seven deadly and some frauds um but um so i wrote these seven points down and they could be added to i but i don't think they could be taken away from so the, the, uh, and I, I, I'm almost ashamed to say them out loud because they sound so simple. But I think it just it it deserves saying out loud so that we can go. Yeah, that's yeah, we agree with that. So here we go. Point one: I will deepen my knowledge of MMT. Stands to reason, right? Two: I will teach MMT to interested people. Now, I don't know about you, Steve, but what you know when you've first discover MMT, you go, oh my God, I've got to tell everybody. And you're just walking up to strangers at bus stops. You know, <laughs> you know the government can't run out of money because they're the monopoly issuer. And you're just, you know, you know, and, and, and uh, you're you driving know. in the fast food restaurant. And they say, <laughs> yeah. Prize for that. Let me tell you about that. <laughs> exactly. So, and, and it, it, that's kind of how I got down to making a podcast. Cause I thought, I think the kind of people who are going to, eventually sort of want to take the time to understand this are the kind of people that will get to listen to things uh, in podcast form rather than you know on twitter it's just like people just love that you know 280 characters you know just yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, i'm cleverer than you no i'm cleverer than you and it just you know so anyway uh so anyway that's that's how i i decided to try and teach only or teach or you know, enthuse people who are only people who are already interested <laughs> or because uh, otherwise you're going it's like you're a if you're a car salesman do you just walk around on the street trying to flog cars to people <laughs> or do you get a job at a, at a car dealership <laughs> you know it's, you've got a much longer life you've got to you've got to move them through a longer transition if you just walk up to them on the street uh as a, as a car dealer so um yeah here, yeah, Rob's agreeing. Yeah, yeah. There was just me did the same thing. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So, so yeah, I'll end up, Yeah. So, so one is deeper knowledge of MMT. Two, teach MMT to interested people. Um, three, uh, I really found that out the hard way. You know, it, it cost me relationships for sure. Um, uh, three, I will endeavor to make people curious about MMT. And that, again, that's just wide open. Could be art, could be, could just be conversations. It could be, you know that that's that's as broad as you want it to be. Um, uh, for I will make and share resources to help myself and others do one, two, and three. So again, that, I I would count my our podcast, mine and Patricia's podcast, in that category of like this is a tool. So if 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 you come across somebody who's interested in MMT or seems to have an interest in macroeconomics, you can go hey, hey um, if rather than arguing on Twitter with people, uh, you know, just start here and listen, you know, you spend a lot of time uh, do it, time of the time of your day doing chores or something, just plug this into your ears and see what you think. So and we'll, we'll move you along from, from curious to 
uh, maybe questioning and maybe want to just push back on it and, and maybe to the point where you get it. Uh, so, uh, and then five, I will prioritize engaging with authentically curious people over those who are not. So I think that happens a lot online as well. You can, you can spot it instantly, I think, or, or I think we need to develop a sort of an instinct for knowing when to just go, hang on a second. You know, usually somebody will pop up online and go, hey, idiot, you're an idiot. <laughs> and, and then when I see people try to, <laughs> when I see people try to go, oh, idiot, how? Let's turn it, you know, this this person really wants me to turn them around. I'm like, no, 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 don't go there. That person's just come in and just wants to waste your time. You know, as long as you're typing words into that keyboard, uh, you try to win some stupid competition, you, you think of the opportunity cost, all the people you could have been changing or get or making curious or answering questions that were genuinely curious. Or think, you know, th think of what you're losing if you go down that rabbit hole with this with that guy you know it's always a it's always a guy as well <laughs> oh, yes it is yeah Absolutely. um so um yeah i know uh, there was this thing and I, I think i linked to it somewhere but I, it's, there's this um if you haven't heard of it you should google it uh sea lioning right yep. and it's yep. this <laughs> right and so it's this sort of person that just comes up and just keeps asking you questions that are just not it's designed it on the surface of it it looks like they're they're coming across as a curious person but really they're just wasting your time yes. it's described as a sort of a, a a physical uh denial of service attack <laughs> you know <laughs> you know it's just because while you're doing this you can't actually you know you can't actually function because you're answering all these you know inane questions or off point questions so you know it's good to be able to sort of identify those people early on i think so um uh, yeah, number six, when teaching or debating, I will not make statements about MMT that I do not know to be 100% correct. Now, I'm sorry if that sounds a bit scoldy or a bit, you know, prohibitive. All I mean to say is if you get into an area where you, you don't, you're not confident that you're going to say the right thing, it's okay to say, I think it's like this. And I, I but, you know, uh, keep me honest you know you ask around the experts man point exactly to the there's so much out there isn't there you yes. know I, and you've made half of it so you know there's so <laughs> much out there that you can link to uh so um yeah and there, uh, you know it's not like the you know the weird thing about the mmt now is people there, there was some discussion about whether the job guarantee is in or out of uh is part of mmt or not part of mmt and people are going the people who are saying no it's not and then there are only a small number of people but no it's not part of mmt uh, when we're um <laughs> when we're having the back and forth i'm thinking like, it's not like we're debating what marx said and meant you know the people who wrote this stuff they're still alive <laughs> we could just ask them in fact even better we don't need to ask them it's well documented well, you know, <laughs> yeah. I, 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 I was I, I think i'm no i, I think I, no i do have it i still have it i keep this piece of paper for whatever reason this little this piece of paper here has got this little uh you know accounting yeah. identities right and yeah, yeah. sort of being silly but the truth is is that I, I I see MMT in, in two ways, right? I see MMT as the operational reality. You can trace the balance sheets, the ledgers. You you can go through, see the accounting identities, see how the stuff flows. It's empirical. This is not theoretical. This is you're watching the you're watching it happen. Yeah, right? yeah. Then you have now that I've gotten these new glasses from you know the the op optician you know I, now now I can see things a little differently and, and and so now I can theoretically create a framework for programs and policies based on these new glasses I have now that I understand how the ledgers work now mm. I can see clearly and, and this is where the theoretical portion of it you know this is the ever expanding here's how this knowledge translates into you know other things it, it can expand how the the body of knowledge ebbs and flows and grows but there's a core that is just facts and it's not up for debate it, the debate's mm. done you know and this yeah. is this is like gravity it's it this is it and so when you fight with folks about what is it's kind of like insanity right that at some point in time they have to want to pick up a book 
They got to crack the spine of a book. They got to click a link. They got to do something other than fight with you about reality because that is mm. a true time waste. Um, yeah. but anyway, keep going. And I just wanted to throw that in there. I yeah. Thought <laughs> um, yeah. But I mean, I'm nearly done. So, it, so that last thing I talked about was just knowing, uh, you know, being, uh, being okay with saying, look, I'm, I don't know whether I'm 100% correct here. Uh, but, you know, these things I know, these things I'm sketchy on. You know, just make sure that you know, uh, uh, you know, you you uh, you know what you're talking about, and to the but that shouldn't stop you from talking if you don't. But just say this this thing I'm not sure on. I think is a better way forward, um, and uh, and then that also highlights where you need to, uh, and uh, you need to go back to step one. And I will deepen my knowledge of MMT these conversations also shine a light on where you you need to sort of uh, uh, delve into your learning a bit deeper. That, I think it's good. Um, uh, it's good to have conversations and get into an area where you don't know the answers because it shows you the way forward as a learner. Um, uh, so yeah, number seven uh, is I recognize that the job guarantee or transition job is part of MMT and I need to be accomplished at explaining it. And um, that I, I um, that's uh, that's what I'm uh, uh, yeah that, that's that's the end of it really and when when I floated it on the um, MMT for real progressives uh, forum I, the only real pushback was uh, that uh, the, there was this is the job guarantee part of MMT or not. Um, I think maybe we've solved that one. I, I think there's enough consensus that it is, and obviously we, we know it's in the literature. And then the other thing was using the word teaching. Yeah, I, um, I will teach MMT to interested people. Um, I can't remember who, but it was a valid point. They said that um, it, it's to teach might be not the appropriate words. You know, like we're not the teachers. We need to refer people to the experts. So maybe the other word was the way I was thinking about maybe rephrasing that was I will share what I know with them about MMT uh, to interested people. Right. Maybe. Um, Absolutely. We think about this, right? So we have professors that teach, right? And then we have us who are. You know, John the Baptist. Yes, that's it. Like, that's precisely it. I, I, yeah, that's yeah. my line, actually, is I run. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and I think that it, it, we're pointing the way to the people that know. But we're taking what we know and we're extrapolating it down for consumable bite sizes. Um, and, yeah. and this is where we get in trouble, right? This, this is one thing that, that I think is worth taking a moment to talk about. Um, back when Ellis and I used to do our show together, you know, we got critiques from on high and from on low because we quote unquote simplified things. Oh, well, that's not precisely correct. You know, and stuff like that. And, and, and Ellis would get very, very upset because it's like, guys, listen, we're trying to convey the essence of this message. None of these people we're talking to are planning to become MMT economists and they are not going to be getting their PhD based on this live stream. If they get mm. their you know PhD, they'll go through whatever training and rigor that they need to go through. So yeah. we don't have to worry about that. We're not going to yeah. send bad. We've already economists are already terrible to begin with, so we can't hurt it anymore. <laughs> profession is so bad. I totally agree. I totally agree. <laughs> so get out. It, it sounds to me like you guys were just annoying a, precisely the right people that needed to be annoyed. Basically, <laughs> we tried. You know, yeah. and you know, we would have people come through, right? And you know, we're here. You have to come to us. It's not like we're going to you here. And and they would come into the chats or they would come into the show and, and they would start saying, oh, the Federal Reserve is private banksters, you know, <laughs> you know, they come up with all these things and distract the guns, you know, just send them exactly. down there. This is and what I'm like, saying. Sea lining. Yes. You know, it's like it's been answered. <laughs> Ask the answer. Like, you know, I mean, just, yeah, exactly. Here's the link. Just like it's beyond it's beyond dispute, you know, to anybody that with eyes. <laughs> yes. Yes. So okay. So I want to talk just for a minute about the job guarantee itself. And um, you know, for for a program, what seems like a policy program to matter. Why why would this program be essential to MMT? Well, 
it's essential for an efficient economy when you understand what the dollar was to begin with. As Mosler says, the dollar created the first unemployed person, the tax. You know, once you impose that tax, you now have created the very first unemployed person because that person has to do something to get that dollar to pay that tax. And, and this goes back forever you know as long as there's been a fiat currency of any flavor even metalist f- currencies um you know that had the king's you know the king's yeah. gold as it were um you know the, what do i need this for i'm going fishing you know i'm going yeah. to pick a potato out of the ground whatever and, and they, dark currency yeah so now why do i need this what, what the mm. hell do i need this for right and and the imposition of the hut tax the imposition of a tax the imposition of an obligation payable only in that is what generated unemployment. So if the government can generate unemployment, it has the responsibility to end it as well. And and so from a from just a pure yeah. ethical standpoint, the job guarantee functions to create a ethical bottom of the economy that you no longer have people that are living in destitution, that you've created a situation where we've imposed this thing on you and rather than making you slaves, we've now given you a way out that you'll always be able to meet your obligations. Um, yeah. I, um, I think a way into it. Sorry if, to, if no, I'm talking over you, Steve. Not at all. Um, I think, uh, I think we need to be able to talk to, right. You, you know, you, you and I both identify as progressives and, uh, you know, left of center. I, th- I do think we need to put some effort into learning how, or, or yeah, learning how to talk to, people who are right of center about the job guarantee because left of center people get it on, on political conscience grounds. And I, you know, I think it's almost like we need to forget that stuff, (laughs) forget it because sooner or later you're going to end up talking to somebody or the person that you're talking to who's left of center will end up talking to somebody who is right of center. And if they don't have the right way of putting it across, our idea is going to stop there and we need it to spread beyond our tribe. Now, you know, uh, the, the trick with Grumbine is that Grumbine started out not only a radical right wing conservative, but a Christian radical right wing conservative. Uh, so I spoke fluent Tea Party. I spoke fluent <laughs> Ron Paul. I yeah. spoke fluent LOL Bertarian. And I spoke fluent GOP. I, sp- you know, what I mean, so, so yeah. I, I, I come from that world. And part of that, that transition, you know, is that I learned how to speak both languages. And you think about this, yeah. cons- conservatives are largely concerned with fairness, too, in a different way. Mm, you know, yeah. we, we, we as progressives are concerned about fairness and that we, you know, we see capital reigning supreme over labor and so forth. But on the other side of the game, they're saying, hey, I worked really hard for my money. Why should you who are lazy get the same thing I'm getting? You yeah. know, and, and so there's a bit of a fairness element there as well. It, it's not completely out of uh, it, there's, no, there's that, there is the exactly there are loads of areas where we connect on. So, uh, um, you know, the on, on both sides of the spectrum. And I was thinking I was having a, a, a chat on Twitter with just before I came on air with you, um, <laughs> somebody just said, "How about actually lying?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that could work. Yeah, what? <laughs> I don't think anybody thought of that. <laughs> um, yeah, um, uh, yeah. With Jeff Epstein, I was chatting with him on Twitter. Happy birthday, Jeff, if you're around. Um, uh, he and uh, he was, uh, and uh, we we're talking about. Um, Oh God, um, libertarians probably not liking the job guarantee. But I'm thinking actually, well, the government intervenes to make people unemployed. So we're trying to get it back to the state of no intervention by using the job guarantee. Now, obviously, you could say, well, that means we should just dismantle the government. And yeah, duh, yeah. <laughs> but but like until that point, <laughs> until we've totally dismantled the government and we're all living in caves off our wits, you know, <laughs> forging our own steel. <laughs> fighting each other to the death for you know a, 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 you know each other's meat um and, you know until we get to that point we should maybe try and get the get you know get it back to a state of no intervention you know the intervention is the thing that makes the unemployment um i don't know if that's a, a worthwhile talking point i'm just throwing it out there you know it's interesting coming from that libertarian world you know they believe tax is force so i think that yeah it, well it is yeah when, when you understand that 
the tax is also what creates this environment. You know what you're what you're doing is saying, hey, listen, we're we're kind of putting one on the left side of the equal sign, and we're putting one on the right, and we're making this balance out now. Is is now we're taking away some of the force, and we're giving you an easy out, so to speak. We're giving you a way of being what you want to be, and taking away some of the force element. And by creating communities, which is you know, you know, they want volunteerism and so forth. I mean, this is a voluntary program. You know, they're they're you. Yep. You have- yeah, I think that gets lost a, a lot of the time. People think, oh, you know, this, that's the government coming in and saying you're not allowed to be unemployed. And, of course, I think one of uh, episode four of our podcast series, shameless plug, um, <laughs> the, um, we um, we talked to Fidel uh, Kaboob, who's amazing. Uh, I'm sure everybody watching knows he's amazing. And, you know, one of the first things he says is if you don't want to work in the job guarantee on moral grounds, on, on ideological grounds, nobody has to. You know, you can be uh, you can be voluntarily unemployed. You can be between jobs. So I think two big things people miss about the job guarantee is that um, it's voluntary. It's voluntary. Um, uh, it's it it's a voluntary scheme, and it's federally funded and locally administered. A lot of people always forget that, but you've, we've been over that a thousand times, I'm sure. But um, to the uh, earlier point about uh yeah so tax is force yeah it is so the point is is it illegitimate force it is if the the things that you the reasons that you're taxing and spending haven't been arrived at democratically then yeah that is a legitimate force so i think the solution to that is to legitimize that force by expanding democracy and doing what you can to do that rather than dismantling the whole system i just don't think that's going to create a fairer world because the the first thing that happens is when you dismantle the state you've still got these large conglomerations of private power and they're just going to be the new government well and and well i mean what's the you know what's the only relationship you can have two relationships with a corporation as an individual uh, a consumer or an employee that's it you yeah, know? yeah. Uh, and uh, you know the, as Noam Chomsky is very fond of saying a lot of the time you know corporations are top-down tyrannies you know that they all they're, they're pure totalitarian organizations you know that's that's just I think that's I think that's a spot on analysis of, of it. So the only countervailing force we've got at the moment are is is government state power. And so we need to instead of having that state power constantly captured by private power, we need to do what we can to change that equation and uh you know participate in in democracy. I love it. Yeah. Yesterday's election here in the United States was was a travesty for progressives, and yeah. um, I think that a but lot. In a way, they didn't use. To, well, is it not that you know they're they're not they're not being radical enough? The Democrats aren't being radical enough, and that's why they're getting their asses kicked. Well, uh, the Democrats, though, by definition, are the center party. They've always been the center mm-hmm. party, and that's the problem, right? There is no left in America. And the left that is there is getting 200 votes instead of, you know, 20,000 or 2 million. I mean, they're, the, the left has been marginalized and cut out and then vote shamed out of anything. We, we have this problem in the United States, unlike other places where we don't have ruling coalitions. We, we have this first past the post uh uh, you know, oh, we, we have first past the post here as well. Yeah, it's, well, we, we, there is no coalitions. It's mm. a duopoly, period. And, mm. and so, because of that, there's this thing called Du Verger's Law that goes out there, and it, it really makes it impossible for independents and third parties of any variety to make any real traction. They almost have to have a movement backing them, which is what this movement for a People's Party was banking on, hoping and praying that Bernie Sanders would walk away and ride on his horse taking this party to the promised land. And that would have then depleted the Democrats and moved them over here to this new thing that would be democratized and all the super delegates would be gone and all this stuff, you know, and it didn't quite play out that way. So we're sitting here as progressives, basically men without a home, women without a home because mm. the democratic party doesn't actually do progressive stuff. They, they really don't. They, they, and in fact, we were joking yesterday about uh, a Christmas carol and talking about the Democrats of Christmas past, the Democrats of Christmas present and the Democrats <laughs> of 
of Christmas future and the Democrats of Christmas future end up being Republicans. <laughs> There's such a, the, the Democrats of today have this ghostly remembrance of what it was like to be FDR, of what it was like to be JFK, of what it was like to, you know, actually fight for public services. And, and the Democrats of today really don't do that. So they're just sort of nagged. Uh, you know, they don't really know who they are. And if you just want a Republican, Republicans do Republicanism better than anybody. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, yeah. Um, I think a way out of not being depressed by this situation, and we have it in the UK, we've got a bit more of a spectrum now because we've got um, uh, Jeremy Corbyn leading the Labour Party. So it's... Um, it's looking like more of an authentically left-wing Labour Party and a, more of an authentic left-wing opposition than we've had for some time. So I think maybe b deliberately or by accident, the Labour Party as an institution has learned the lessons of the Blair years. Um, so, um, But I, I always think a way to stop getting depressed by this situation is think of politics as movements not as getting your party elected it's just that's that's the last stage you know it, it's get you know and and so that's why i'm trying to think of the mmt as a movement and so instead of going um mmt uh, we we want um uh, a green new deal it's like no no that's you people who want that can use mmt but but the mmt is globally i think we you know we want full employment and price stability Okay, it doesn't mean we don't care about those other things, but like if we start adding extra missions to it, to our uh, grassroots effort to uh, spread MMT, we're going to get distracted. And that's pretty much what happens to political parties. They end up, you know, they have to have this plank and that plank and that plank. And then by the time the manifestos come out, it's compromise after compromise. And, you know, you're just going, well, like, uh, again, sorry, I'm going to, for the second time I brought up Chomsky, but like it's, he goes, oh, there's one party in, in America. There's the business party and it's got two arms. It's got the, the Republican arm and the, de and the Democrat arm, but it's the same party. And that's yeah, that's, that's, that's kind of, if you're, you know, if you are power or connected to power, that's the way you want it. You right. want it to look like there's choice. Um, you know, like as a, as a parent, you're a parent, you know, I would say to them, I, you know, I've got two kids and you're going, uh, you want them to get dressed and they don't want to get dressed. You, you, you know, you go, all right, whoever can get dressed the quickest, uh, <laughs> you know, wins the competition and they go and they're dressed all of a sudden, you know, or, you know, uh, if you've got a kid that doesn't want to get dressed, you go, do you want to put on the red top or the blue top? And they make a choice and they put it on and you're like, yes, I got you dressed. <laughs> you, know, that, that, you know, I think parents understand how, you know, the two party system works implicitly, you know. <laughs> That was actually very good. I hope I have to remember that as a dad. I got to put that in the book. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, so one more, one more thing I want to bring up before we get into the final leg here. Um, yeah, yeah, because we, we want to answer these U UBI questions. Yes. For, for another hour. Yes. I mean, you, you figure it this way, right? We, we have been inundated with misinformation, right? Disinformation, you name it. There is a lot of fighting going on on Twitter amongst mm. academics even right now. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and, and these academic wars cascade down to the worker bees, the, the warriors on the front line. And, and they don't have all the tools. I mean, we've got people on our team, quite frankly, that haven't taken the time to, to ingest and consume and read the literature so that they're prepared for these battles. And they'll go out there and go, you're an idiot or you're this. Idiot. And it's like, ah, and it's a know. gift to, to them because then they, instead of dealing with the, like the hardcore literature, they'll go a person on MMT, a person, uh, you know, an MMT esque Twitterer said this, so I'm going to address this, and it's like yes. they don't speak for every MMT. They don't, you know. There's there's what twenty odd, there's two decades of uh, scholarly work gone into it, and um, uh, there's uh, you know I, we, we won't mention her by name, but there is a there's there's a, a financial blogger over here in in the UK that's very, you know, has not exactly covered herself in glory <laughs> by you know just you know. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, it's it's there to see, but like she's, you know, she's tilting at straw men all day long. It's just, you know. <laughs> uh, but I think look, what we don't need to address that. Let, let 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 them slug it out. There's 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 a 
you know, this is a massive low ball estimate. There's a thousand people you could be talking to who are genuine, genuinely curious that you could have some impact with. There's no, the, the person that gets up in your grill and with the, you know, hey, idiot, <laughs> explain this. You know, I mean, Bill, <laughs> exactly, you know. And it's like, well, no, that's, I don't need to explain that. What the, <laughs> why don't you go and Google that? You can do, you know, why don't you bring that question up later when I'm not here? <laughs> Exactly. I mean, it's, it, it is amazing because like, you know, I was, uh, you know, looking at Bill Mitchell being thrashed by this individual. Did, and, uh, have you read his blog, his latest blog? Oh, oh yeah. In fact, you should, like, Poetry I mean, it, it's the perfect, it's the perfect comeback. Was, what, what is it? Something like, well, MMT doesn't, you know, doesn't show how monetary sovereignty works on Pluto. <laughs> <laughs> or something like that. He really, he really just, wait, it was beautiful. And then the, the whole blue. Show, me, oh, show me, show me where on Snapchat. Yeah. <laughs> yes. You've addressed this. Favorite. Yes. That was the best. But, but, but when I saw that though, right. I, you know, my, my, my first instinct is, you know, I'm close to Bill. I like Bill a lot. And there he is, you know, being publicly flamed by this person with 40 plus thousand followers and, and I'm 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 frustrated, and and then I look in our inbox, and our inbox is full of people coming to us. What about this article? What about this article? And I yeah. and I, I used uh, you know uh, notes from um, a guy who does bond economics, uh, Brian Romanchuk. He wrote a great rebuttal as well uh, to her monetary oh. sovereignty. Yeah, not the myth so. of the myth of yes. monetary he, sovereignty. There was he, a great he, piece. The myth of the myth of. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was beautiful. But, you know, we're in there answering inboxes from this. And it's like Claire um, came to me earlier today saying, you know, I let them fight this out. We're good. And, and I thought to myself, wait a minute. She brought up a great point. She said, you know what? If they're accidentally now asking about MMT because – the charlatan went out there and and mm. spewed the screed out there call it a win you know because yeah. here we have an opportunity to address that so i think that it's always a matter of perspective um this is what's going to happen as it gets more and more traction yes that, you know it, it was it was so fringe a year ago uh now it's it's still it's still fringe but it's growing you know yes um i think more warren said in one of his talks that i heard uh, that it's becoming more. Uh, uh, he he heard a uh, he heard a reaction in mainstream media that was something like, "Oh well, MMT says this," instead of "Or Keynesianism would have said this." So you know, it's already starting to replace. Uh, it's already starting to be a go-to uh, trope. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, I I think that it's important though. I, I want to make this point to tie it back to your manifesto because this manifesto is something that I want RP to kind of get behind. I mean, we, to, to be clear, when real progressive started, we started as a political movement to both support Stephanie Kelton, but also support Bernie Sanders. Um, it, we weren't in, you know, the uh, classroom where we had the chalkboard and we just said, well, let us, we're only here to talk about MMT. We're not here to talk about the progressive movement. We're not here to talk about an agenda. We're here to talk about MMT. For a lot of us, we've been suffering through this. And I watch people that follow us defeat after defeat after de impending defeat over and over and over again. And, and, you know, for years they've had these great visions and for years victory has been snatched out from in front of them. And they watch the, the cackling Hillary Clinton laughing and saying, how are you going to pay for it? It's pie in the sky. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and that horrible cackle, the neoliberal cackle of the vote blue corporate Democrats in America yeah, yeah. Has, has plagued progressives forever it, it, it's it's what really haunts their existence did, did you see nancy pelosi straight after the uh, when, when they took back the house she was just, just went hey we're not going to be like the republicans and it's like you you exactly need to be like the republicans yes. you know, she's no quarter you know, have you learned nothing 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 that's just it <laughs> and know? so but the idea here is, is that progressives are hurting and they've always been hurting and they've always been angry. And they're the, I, I, quite frankly, I know that they'll hate me for saying this, but it's okay. 
<laughs> I, I largely see activists and, and independents as the activist wing of the Democratic Party, even though they don't want to see themselves that way, because right now there aren't any Greens really elected at the moment. There aren't a, a whole lot of independents out there elected at the moment. And so whether we like it or not, these these jokers are, are running the show. And so yeah, our only choice is to influence them while we try and build power and whatever, whether we're inside or outside that party. The, the, you know, and that's just in the U.S. I see this happening all around the world, although you all have a little bit more freedom to uh, work in multi, uh, co- you know, caucus groups. Uh, you know, you have multiple ways of, of pulling people together to work. Well, we have that, too. And unfortunately, because of the way that the bylaws are written in the United States, I mean, these are private corporations, these parties, and they they have no requirement to hold a, even a um, a primary. They can just hand pick whoever they want to be their candidate. So for for activists that have fought for Bernie Sanders that maybe got woken to that moment. Um, you know, had a huge chasm of defeat in their heart. I mean, everything fell apart. They started to believe for a minute, and then it was taken yeah. away. No, and, well, what, well, I was going to say that if you if you look at it, if 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 you go, I have to get Bernie elected. Bernie has to be president. Everything else is going to depress me. You're going to be depressed, <laughs> right? I think what we, I, but I actually, I, you know, I love Bernie, uh, but you know, that that's kind of, um, I think we, what we should do as progressives or any kind of activists, and it's going to sound weird, but we should learn from UKIP. UKIP is the UK independence party. Uh, and they were set up to, um, get the, to get Britain out of the European union. Um, and, uh, People mistakenly think, oh, they're irrelevant. They've never won any elections. They've no. What they did was they threatened to cost conservatives the election over here in the UK, uh, and the the um, conservatives had to promise an in-out referendum on the European Union. As a co- and it took seventeen years for this guy Nigel Farage, who you know, I don't like UKIP. I don't like Nigel Farage. I'm I'm actually a, a Remain voter. I, I you know, I wish we were still in the European Union, uh, even though it has massive flaws. But that you know, that's another topic for another day. But um, uh, so they they pressured the Conservatives to including this referendum in their manifesto, and that meant and then the Conservatives, you know, squeaked in. Uh, managed to hold on to power because they adopted that then the referendum happened and now we're leaving the european union so uh, as a movement uh ukip actually worked it took them 17 years but that you know that's how you pull a party to your end of the political spectrum exactly you know? You know, it's it's funny i'm watching some of the comments here about ukip because obviously ukip played mm. with the conservative side of the things but the reality yeah. is that- the tea so we, need, you, we can do a left wing UKIP, you know, yes. pull them this way, you know. Stop, stop worrying about what they are and start worrying about what model they use. I've been saying, yeah. I, I yeah. want to put this point out there. You know, I, I did a stream the other day called Spreadsheets, and I talked about how the right wing is organized. They don't sit there and bicker, they don't mm. sit there. They, it's simple, they focus, and they get shit done. And I mean, it's bad mm. shit. But they get it done. And I'm like, guys, in order for us to take even baby steps forward, we got to really organize. And that means we need systems. That means we need people dialed into some basic principles that we don't cross over, that we stay no matter what. This is ground zero right here. And and that's what they do. And that's why they keep cleaning our clock. I hope that I hope this doesn't sound off color, but I think I think the 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 best um some of the best activists in the world are in the business community yep because <laughs> they you know if you think about like what a startup is or, or how you move from a startup to a successful business is you go where are we going and you you don't there is no step in in a business plan that's like magic happens <laughs> and then and then and then we'll be in profit you know it's like no it's like will will this lead to that okay no it won't we need to rethink this step but, you know, and hammer it out until uh, until we get these steps that actually work. And, um, yeah, I think if you're a progressive, I think you need to 
uh, I think you need to do that as well. You need to have those that kind of uh, ethic behind the direction you're going in, and and it all starts with knowing where you want to get to. Uh, you know, in real specific terms, like the more specific you can be, the better chance you've got of hitting it. Right. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, I, I wish I well, actually, maybe I can show you, I'm going to take my camera off my computer here and, and I have this little whiteboard over here. Um, and it's got, oh, don't, don't let him see the secret plan, Steve. <laughs> well, we're, it's, we're a cult. We're a cult. <laughs> it's actually just a flow chart of how to check the inbox on the page. That's how <laughs> it is. It's just a flow chart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the thing is, is that it's things like that. Yeah, yeah that lack i mean you, you try and get I say it was it was a pentacle <laughs> yeah there, <laughs> there you go but if you if you think about it the the people what we're up against yeah. God, it sounds so bad but you, you know you see you, you see us talking about folks throwing rocks at at um uh you know police and stuff like that and then they shoot them with a bullet and it's like that's disgusting it's evil it's horrible but that's kind of what it's like when you're a progressive or or just a, a regular proletariat fighting back against a machine that's organized. If all we're going to do is run around with cardboard signs in our hands and growls and be miserable, we're not going to do much of anything. True, true. It, it, I, it, I mean, may, maybe you're thinking. I mean, I'm thinking aloud here, so you know, give me enough rope, I will hang myself. Um, <laughs> the, the um, uh, but I, I maybe it's like these are not the folks we're up. Because you know you're saying the folks we're up against. Maybe it's a question of thinking: Are we up against them? Because you know, remember at some point in this conversation, we we're going. Actually, there's a lot of alignment here. Yeah, you know, they want this. We actually want this. We're just talking about it in a different way. So I always think if if the idea you're trying to get across requires the person you're talking to to completely change their worldview, you know, and it's in sort of you're not going to get there. And you, if you want people to to understand mmt the great thing about it is they don't need to change their worldview they can be a conservative they can be like uh, very into capitalism and uh, uh you know <laughs> yeah exactly yeah. Talking about right there i'm not talking about i'm talking about when i see the powers that be the powers that we're fighting against you know, yes, it, yeah, it, yeah. This is this is the two sides of the one party that Noam Chomsky talks about. They have the Democrat arm and the Republican mm -hmm. arm, but it's still the capital arm. And and the bottom line is that the illusion of choice. When we talk about fighting that, you know, our own misinformation. It, it, it's the illusions that people. I mean, why would somebody that watches the United States out of thin air? come up with 700 billion like that for the military suddenly think that we can't come up with the basics to pay for healthcare. I, I'm just, just spitballing, can't figure it out. <laughs> right. And so there's some mind game that has gone on to allow people to believe this thing. And so when you say you're dealing, you're oh, dealing with decades. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, mate. Sorry, I, I keep talking over people. I'm no, an idiot. you're fine, man. This is the, this is the point, though. It's like, yeah. you know, you look over here. I'm going to be talking to the Green Party of Pennsylvania here, uh, not this weekend, but next weekend. And you know, we're going to be talking about organizing. We're going to talk about a little bit about uh, making sure that our needs are met, so to speak, and and how to to effectively communicate this stuff. And I, I've been so morose with looking at politics in America because everybody's telling me I'm not a Democrat or I'm not a this. Tell me what you're for. Help me out. Tell me what you are for. Show me what you will do when you govern. Show me what you will do. And if you don't understand the economic base, yeah, everything else is horseshit. And mm -hmm. It really is because you literally can't do anything you just said. It's like yeah. – Tell me about your uh, so everything you say past the butt can't be done. There's no yeah. point in having the rest of that conversation. I don't care what your morality is. I don't care what your politics are. If you don't understand the economics of it, you're selling snake oil. Yeah, I think and, that that should be your posture. Just like guys, do, you know, do you want to understand how to get what you want? Do you do you understand how to talk about it? Because the first thing that you're going to come up against is somebody going, the government's run out of money or how you're going to pay for it. And, you know, this. If, if you're interested, I can solve that problem for you. 
uh, you know, but like you like you've said in the past, if you're just if you just want to put your fist in the air uh, and uh, and uh, you know hold a sign and stuff, then yeah, that's all that's good as well. It's nice to have a get together, but you know this this will really get you where you want to go. Uh, exactly. You know, it, it's in your hands. You know, yeah, and see, and that's it. You take away the the victim side of this. And you give them the keys to the car. You say, listen, this right here drives the vehicle. You put these keys in, it goes. MMT is the keys. It's the gas. It's whatever you want to call it. It's the engine of the car. Otherwise, yeah. you're just sitting there in like a, you're in a tin can. You're doing nothing. You're going nowhere. Um, and so I think that this this thing that we're doing here and this manifesto that you're, you've put together is really, really important. I think that you know, one of the challenges I would give to my own followers, the people that are part of real progressives, it, it, take the time to learn this stuff. Don't, don't shortchange the learning. Don't shortchange the, the getting to know the material, know where mm. to find information. You know, don't, you, you know, don't, don't just immediately yell, you know, for a floaty to find it, do the hard work, go to new economic perspectives, go to Fidel Kaboob and, and uh, Global Institute for Sustainable Prosperity, go to Levy Institute, go to UMKC, go to Naked Capitalism, go to these places that have the stuff. Come here. Mm. Go, you know, yeah. what it is, is that go to Deficit Owls. There's a go to Modern Money Network, go to the MMT podcast, go to oh, these places. That sounds like a great podcast, Steve. It sure does. Uh, you know, uh, but use the tools. Yeah. Use the tools so that you exactly can be effective. There's loads of there's loads of them out there, and uh, loads of ways. So I mean, you don't have to go down the library anymore. You can, and and a, a thing that I'm fond of saying is, um, if you can't find where these things are, just tweet me, tweet Patricia, tweet. I'm sure you know. Obviously, I don't want to inundate you, Steve. But you know, tweet Steve. You know, he knows where the stuff is. You know, you know, you know, he can link you to the stuff. My inbox is full. I'm constantly oh, getting right, mixed yeah. out. I mean, no, I'm serious. This is what mm. we do. And 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 yeah. I think that everybody has a little bit of a responsibility to get to the point where they shoulder some of that. And, yeah. and But this manifesto, though, what I love about it is it says point blank, don't go past your knowledge level. Once you don't understand something, rather than try to keep saying that, you know, Call for a lifeline. Go out there and and point yeah. to an expert. Find find someone to help you, and and if not, point them in the direction because we don't want to spread false information. We don't mm -hmm. want to just come off half cocked. We we really do want to be advancing knowledge, real knowledge, and and that MMT is and to me is is real hope. Um, Maybe so that should be the next. Um sort of conversation that we open up on the forum is like okay how to talk about the job guarantee to people who are don't identify as progressives i think you know, that's i get you know i'm because I'm, I'm sure people have got great ideas about that i think that might be the next the next thing absolutely so uh real quick i want to i want to plug the mmt podcast and patricia one more time it's a great, it's a great podcast um it, no it really is and i love it and and <laughs> And, and just so everyone, I'm being silly. Sorry, everyone. No, but I'm being serious. It's <laughs> phenomenal. Um, it, we we are in the process of of getting these tracks. We've laid them out already in in Libsyn, or excuse me, in Zencaster. We've done the interviews. Uh, we have some intros that we need to apply to them. We have the intro music, etc. Uh, Macaron cheese is going to be out here in very, very short order. We're, 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 we've got really, really slick artwork. I mean, it's really phenomenal. Reminds you of um, uh, the uh, Sin City meets 300 kind of uh, sepia with the slashes of color kind of a, a approach to it. It's got a really neat theme. Um, I, I'm really excited about where it's uh, right at the core of it. The content is amazing. It, well, that's it. I mean, just the aesthetic, everything. We're uh, hoping upon hope that we will be able to make it so that it's interesting to non-scholars, that people want to consume this. Uh, mm -hmm. And fingers crossed that we succeed because we really need people that right now, I think we've we've hit this blast radius of people that are open to a certain style. Now we've got to hit another blast radius of a slightly different style and we got to keep 
expanding that blast radius. And when we saturate a given area, we got to move on to the next one. And I'm hoping that the podcast allows us to do that. Um, so with that, I want to, I want to give you a chance to say, uh, you know, plug yourself and plug the podcast one more time and anything else that's coming up and we'll go ahead and sign off. Okay. Well, the podcast is, if you want to talk to the podcast, it's at MMT podcast on Twitter. That's the easiest way to remember it. Uh, uh, Yes, I love listening to Miss Pino also. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, and uh, so uh, um, that's the easiest way. And then our Twitter handles are in the description of the at MMT podcast uh, 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 profile. So that's the easiest way to remember to find us. And the, the link to all the episodes is there. Um, or or um, if you Google MMT podcast, it's easier to say it's easier to Google Reckner MMT podcast. So Reckner is the platform, uh, the zine that's putting us out. If it, does anybody say zine anymore? I just did. Uh, right. Uh, yeah. Uh, Re uh, Reckner is spelled R E K N R R E K R E K N R. <laughs> and um, so, sorry, it's it, it's like six p.m. I haven't woken up yet. Um, uh, re yeah, Reckner. Uh, uh, so if you put Reckner MMT podcast into Google, you'll get it. And there we go. There's there's nine episodes out now on Saturday night in the UK, Sunday morning in Australia. We're going to be talking to Bill Mitchell. Uh, so we're going to and we asked for questions for Bill. Thank you, Elizabeth. Uh, we, we, we asked on the forum. Uh, thank you, Michelle. Um, we asked. Uh, on the forum, uh, at the uh, Modern Monetary Theory for Real Progressives forum, uh, if anybody had any questions for Bill. So, you know, keep those coming. We're getting a lot of them. And if you can get the questions down to like three paragraphs, that would help us. <laughs> <laughs> But seriously, we're absolutely stoked that everybody's interested and they've got they've got things to say. And um, so, uh, you know, sorry if I come off flippant sometimes. I, you know, I, I'm genuinely uh, honored to be part of um, a this community that's, you know, just the, they want to learn. They want to spread MMT. And I'm still learning. And, you know, I, I'm I, yeah, I've, I feel very privileged. And, you know, thanks for talking to me, Steve. And thanks for everything that you've done. Oh, no, this is wonderful. I really appreciate it. So folks want to thank you all very much. Please check out uh, Christian and Patricia on the MMT podcast. Be looking for macro and cheese coming out shortly. And with that, thank you so much, man. I appreciate you being my friend and uh, thanks for everything you do. My pleasure. All right. Have a great night, everybody, or a great day, as it were. <laughs> <laughs>